We have a lot to go over in this video, but first, it's Amari's birthday, so the first thing we printed was for him. I thought the cake would be larger. This is Amari, he's one of my best friends and one of the engineers that we work with. Um, happy birthday. Thank you. After 15 years of friendship, you don't know that I don't like cake. Cut <laughs> <laughs> me in the neck. <laughs> Shameless merch plug, these are on the website. Please buy them. So we got a problem. We have to do what normally takes six months and six days. And our dark horse gets here in four weeks. And this is how we're gonna do it. So this is the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon. Now you're probably thinking, wouldn't you wanna use a massive printer for a massive part? That's what we thought. And so we bought this thing. And if anyone's interested, it's for sale on Facebook. While it's true that big printer can print an entire bumper, it comes with the trade-off of speed and quality. And we weren't willing to make that compromise. Now FDM 3D printing is essentially like a glorified hot glue gun that will work its way in layers in order to create an object. Now if we think about layers in the same way that we think about pixels on our phone, the more the layers, the clearer the image. And now the problem is that the more layers there are, the longer it takes in order to achieve an end result. And so what ends up happening is that the compromise of speed is quality and the compromise of quality is speed. Now there are four ways that we can achieve great quality with an increase in speed. Now those four ways are having a faster printer in which these small bamboo printers are able to print twice as fast as the large printer only because that their gantries don't have to suffer from the lack of sturdiness based off of their size. Now the second way is increasing the layer height which would then decrease our quality and that's not a compromise that we want to make. But the third way is to increase the number of printers and now it might be unrealistic to have five of our giant printers making a section of the bumper at a time, but we can have five, 10, 20 smaller printers printing out sections of the bumper at a time and then afterwards connecting them together. And then the fourth way is making sure that the amount of supports that are required to support the actual part in the end is to a minimum. Now, if we think about the way that a part is printed, this one was printed vertically. And now if there are any sorts of overhangs, the printer cannot print in the air. So from the beginning, it needs to print essentially a tower now, these are one of our two Mark Forge machines, and they're considered the gold standard when it comes to strength in FDM 3D printing. And it took 60 hours to print a pair of these Super Motorsport door releases. And on our Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon, it took 120 hours to print one fifth of the bumper. Now you're probably wondering, this doesn't look like a Mustang bumper. And now, in the same way that you wouldn't study for a test the night before, we're not gonna be practicing making bumpers on our printers the day that the Dark Horse arrives. So what we're gonna start right now is 3D printing an entire Civic bumper from scratch using five of our printers, and if we can get it down in under a week. Time starts now. So right now, the first step that we need to take after we set up all the machines is slice all the parts. Essentially what that means is take the 3D model and basically our data that we've completed, and then we're gonna create that as a set of instructions in order for those 3D printers to start working and visualize those parts as layers. Basically, this is the plate that we're seeing for the Bamboo Labs printer. Uh, it's 250 by 250 by 250 millimeters. Um, and this is the size of the parts that we need to print. So yeah, uh, it doesn't fit. Now what we're gonna do is take one of these parts, click on the cut command. And if we take a look at this, this should always be less than 250. So basically what I'm looking at here is a part that I'm gonna have to cut at 168 millimeters tall. I'm gonna add connectors, zoom in, make sure that I choose dowel. So basically the difference between dowel and plug is that the dowels are printed separately. They're basically these little connectors and then the plugs are um, integrated into the part. Now the reason why we wanna make sure that we do one over the other is that if we do plugs, the actual entire part itself is going to require support material on the first layer, which is something that we don't wanna do. And what we're gonna do is gonna go in here and just start adding these connectors. So here we are, we're about to do the first side of the bumper and this is kind of what it would look like if we were all one in one piece. But here we are, we've sliced it into a bajillion pieces that will in the end get attached together. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 parts. All right, so I've got eight plates here and I'm gonna just tell the slicer 
do your thing, just do it right. It's day three, printer number five, which was supposed to show up yesterday, has not shown up. And um, yesterday, basically, we had a few print failures um, on one part in particular, and it just came, uh, it, it just came down to the way that it was oriented. But this is that part now, and it looks really good. So, if you take a look right here, one of the things that we have is called the the AMS. It's like the automatic material. Uh, system or something like that it basically is able to switch between various different materials throughout your print for us we don't really have much benefit to it uh, what we do have benefit for is traditionally if like if you run out of material halfway through a print it's just gonna stop whereas what we can do here is load up all four of these with the same material that we're printing with and it'll keep going uh, in the end I think it's like five kilograms in total that you're able to to use Looks good too. So we go, we take it off of the flexible build plate. Here it looks like we got some support material fill, but it doesn't really look like it affected the part much. This is it, it's about a full week of printing. Uh, we had a few bumps along the way, we needed to reprint a few parts, but ideally we'd have all five printers up and running simultaneously, and it probably would have cut our time down to just two days. Things don't always happen as planned, we lost one in shipping, another one had the hot end crash into a part, uh, but on the plus side, this gave us a chance to answer some important factors, uh, such as what materials will we be using, uh, how we're going to glue all the parts together, and a few other hurdles that in the end, in a version two, uh, is going to help us out a lot. So now we're going to take this bumper outside, we're going to throw it on the car and kind of find out uh, if it fits well, if it doesn't, and where we need to improve if changes need to be made. So here's the car in question. This is my girlfriend's 2019 Honda Civic Type R. And the OEM bumper is quite sharp, and then this new design is inspired from the uh, car that competes in the TCR class. It's a lot rounder and it'll make sense of this lifetime table splitter which is uh yeah different so within 10 minutes bumpers off right now we're carrying over these fender tabs um or these bumper tabs and as well as the grill itself as of right now we've got one on right here and we're about to do the second one but it requires the center grill so what have we learned okay first things first uh, this is printed with ABS, which is great and all. However, we are having some issues with uh, failures along layer lines. Surprisingly enough, uh, from what I've seen, no failures have occurred at the actual seams where the cuts are, which is kind of impressive considering they're failing elsewhere. Um, how are we gonna fix it? Uh, what I'm gonna do is, we're, there's a setting on the printer where we can slow down the prints, but increase strength. So we're gonna give that a try, and if that works, fantastic. The second thing, so when we were doing our scanning, these little tabs right here, maybe maybe we'll get a good look right here. These little tabs, they snap into place on the bumper, and they almost look non-existent, but here in the middle, uh, let me see if I have a better example, right there. There's a tiny, 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 tiny little tab. And all this tab does is lock that grill into place. Otherwise, you cannot snap it. And now, from a scan, it's almost non-existent. But it's right there, that tiny little thing. So, um, we're going to go back to the drawing board, try again. But the good news is, overall, the fitment, um, all of our locations have been pretty correct, uh, which is great. I'm pretty happy with the result. Um, luckily with five printers, the turnaround time of a, of a version two of the prototype is much quicker than, um, I mean, outsourcing and 
at least with that, we're pretty happy. So with the splitter mocked up and kind of everything is installed as this prototype one is going to be, um, I'll explain a few changes that I'm going to end up making. So first things first, uh, in the CAD and the original design, this uh, brake duct right here. So this is for a three inch brake duct for the orange uh, hosing, for the orange hose that you're probably used to. Uh, what we're probably going to do is rather than carry it all the way to the back of the rotor, uh, we're probably going to remove this part right here. So this is the OEM brake duct. It's a little tough to see, but we're going to remove that. End up making uh, like an adapter uh, for the tubing so that we don't have to create that metal bracket. Uh, it'll make life a lot easier. It's about a rain. We don't have a shot, but I'm going to quickly explain something. So this bumper here is going to be the first one that's going to be done in-house. It'll be thermal formed. Uh, that's the main gist and philosophy behind it. We have a few uh, problems and challenges to overcome but the main thing that's really unique about this bumper is that when it ships out it's going to be three main pieces similar to what we see what we've seen before in uh, in GT cars uh, race cars in general the M4 GT3 is a good example where they divide the bumper into middle so middle left and right uh, which means if that if you're into an on tr uh, into a collision on track and you destroy a part of the bumper, you're able to quickly replace it, which is awesome. Uh, for us, same thing. Uh, basically, if you compete in anything wheel to wheel with your car, or even if you're driving on the road and you damage something, you only replace one side. The second benefit is that in terms of a manufacturing standpoint, we can get a lot more details from thermoforing. And then the third thing is that all of our bumpers today, they ship out freight. But if we can put the middle left and right of the bumper in one box that's much much smaller that freight becomes non-existent and the cost of the bumper uh, shipping goes down tremendously but as of right now that's all philosophy that's all theory and um, it's our job to kind of answer the questions and the challenges that are involved with it and um, hope that everything works out so we're now inside we're just quickly scanning a few pieces for the type R uh, this is the headlight bracket the challenge with this is that uh, it can easily get damaged and Honda does not sell uh, a replacement part for this. It's integrated into the uh, OEM bumper. So we're going to recreate this. And then this here is the OEM brake duct. Now this is where it feeds into the fender liner. And on this side is where it is on the bumper. However, the thing is that we're changing it from this rectangular hole, this pocket, to a circular one. So essentially what we're going to do is uh, reverse engineer this uh, rectangular uh, pocket to feed into the three inch uh, traditional tube. Uh, shouldn't be too bad, but yeah, those are the main changes.